I want to stop at the slides for just a moment and talk about me <laughs> and my relationship to, to the King James Version. Because for me, this is not just a scholarly subject. It is a scholarly subject, but it's a deeply personal uh, subject and a story. Uh, I grew up with and on the King James Version of the Bible, like some of you in this room. There was no other translation even to talk about. They existed, I guess, but they were not in our household and they were not in the pulpit. And, uh, and, and it wasn't that there was um, an argument against these other translations. That came later in my life. In those days, there just wasn't another translation uh, to talk about. And uh, I thought I'd show you my oldest uh, personal Bible right here. Uh, I lived in a time in America when they gave away Bibles in the public schools. At least twice, I can re remember in grade school, a, a, a group coming, probably it was the Gideons, and they gave a, a Bible this size to every child in elementary school. Uh, now this isn't one of them, but it's my, the oldest. It must have been printed in about 1952 because in the front of it, very interestingly, it was not printed in America, and I've spent my entire life in America, but it was printed in Scotland, and in the, uh, it's licensed by the King of England. Not King James, but uh, King George VI, <laughs> uh, the father of Elizabeth, because you know, he lived to, to, I think he died in 52, and Elizabeth became queen in 52, isn't that right? Because we're celebrating this special anniversary. So it says, you know, license to be printed by the authority of Her Late Majesty Queen Victoria in 1839, printed in Scotland by the authority of His Majesty King George VI, the 6th of May, 1949. Uh, what's interesting to me is I live in a country that's, that threw out the monarchy over 200 years ago, <laughs> and yet this book from a king of England and the people he assembled to produce it is still having uh, an amazing effect even in the colonies. Um, the King James Version, of course, is no longer uh, imperial in the way it was in my childhood. Most of us have other translations and probably use a lot of them, uh, but we shouldn't overlook the continuing force of this book uh, on our culture. It is affecting us in all sorts of ways. I would argue that it sort of penetrates the psyche of our society, that books can have that effect on us. We may, we may not read the U.S. Constitution daily. In fact, I won't ask, but I'm wondering when was the last time you really read the, the U.S. Constitution through? And yet, every day of your life, you are directly impacted by the ideas of the U.S. Constitution. So it's not a question of whether you read it or not. The question is whether you are under the influence of it. And so my, my theme here is that you are under the influence of a book you may think has been uh, superseded or, or set aside. 